Now the way traditional or classical Chinese medicine uses herbs and formulas is very different from what you see in Western herbalism. Now in this video, I wanna share a little bit about the big differences between classical Chinese herbalism and Western herbalism, including how herbs are used in modern times now, for example, by other alternative practitioners like naturopaths. Hey guys, I'm Alex Hine, author of the book Master the Day, and also a current doctoral student in classical or traditional Chinese medicine. Now, the big difference with Chinese medical herbalism and modern biomedical herbalism, or Western herbalism, is that Chinese medicine is based off of what's called flavor and nature. So the qi and the wei, the qi and the flavor of the herbs, versus what are essentially biomedical active constituents. Now, why is this? Well, first of all, Chinese medicine is thousands of years old. We have medical texts from 500 BC that are talking about herbs. Now that predates modern chemistry by thousands of years. As a result, this concept of active constituents, thinking of like the chemicals in the plants, was not known. And so there was no way people could have possibly known this alkaloid was in this plant. So what they did know was essentially what they learned by putting the herbs in their mouth, which is the flavor and the nature. Now in terms of Chinese medicine, flavor and nature typically means, so for example, if you think about a lemon, when you put a lemon in your mouth, it's sour. It makes you like pucker your face. And it's also kind of cooling, which is why you think about like down south where it's hot in the summer, some ice cold lemonade, right? Lemon has this kind of cooling nature about it, just like mint and just like other plants like that. Now, the flavor is what we talked about, but the nature is what's the cooling part. That's also what's called the qi, which you could consider in one sense the temperature. So for example, if we looked at something called chen pi, chen pi is aged tangerine peel. And chen pi is considered it's acrid, so it kind of disperses things in your body, and it's considered bitter and drying. So the way, for example, chen pi is often used in formulas is in regard to, for example, a pattern called food stagnation, also known as essentially indigestion. You eat too much, you feel bloated, your stomach's full, you're burping, maybe it's a little bit more acid reflux. Chen pi is something that will help disperse that because of its nature. So basically, what early herbalists learned was that herbs focus a lot like, in one sense, physics, where there's up movement, down movement, there's expanding movement, or this consolidating type movement. Think about the sour of the lemon, where it kind of like puckers you. And then think about this chen pi, or spicy. Think about something spicy. You have a hot bowl of chilies, your nose clears, you sweat, like everything just clears out, your lungs open up. This is that acrid, that spicy flavor. And so it opens everything up like this. And all indigenous cultures know this, especially the ones that consume lots of spicy foods. So this idea of like maximizing the polyphenol content did not exist. This is the most primal way that people knew how to use herbs. And it's important because this is how Chinese medicine formulas are composed. They're not comprised of like, this has this alkaloid and this has this chemical that does this. If a practitioner uses just this herb for this bowel movement, that's probably not the Chinese medical approach. They're using them like a Western biomedical doctor. Now, the second big difference that I see is that Chinese medicine uses herbal formulas that are very sophisticated in their architecture versus in Western biomedicine or naturopathic medicine, for example, they typically use single herbs just because that's been their tradition. And in Chinese medicine, herbs are used to, for example, offset the chief, what's called the chief herb. Maybe it can offset the toxicity Sometimes it helps augment the effect of the chief herb. Sometimes it helps protect parts of your body from the damage that the chief herb can cause. So for example, a formula here called Bai Hu Tang, which is called white tiger decoction. This formula is a very simple formula of four ingredients, and the four of which are Shi Gao, which is gypsum, Zhi Mu, Zhi Gan Sao, which is dry fried licorice, and Jing Mi, which is a type of rice. So for example, when we talk about how the formula is composed, this shigao gypsum is used to clear heat from the person's body. This is in a, a pattern where a person has like a raging fever, their pulse is pounding, they're sweating, extremely thirsty, like a very serious condition. The gypsum helps cool down the body. The jirmu, in this case, it helps that gypsum to clear the heat, and it also moistens the dryness in the body because the person has this raging fever. The jirgansao and the jingmi, they benefit and protect the stomach, and they also protect the fluids in the body and they buffer it from the strong effect of this gypsum, which is in a pretty high dose. So what we see is that 
Chinese medical formulas are very sophisticated in the way they've been set together, rather than using single herbs, which is very unusual in classical Chinese medicine. So the big differences are really flavor nature versus essentially being based on modern biochemistry, and the use of formulas that are very specifically constructed versus, again, the use of single herbs. So I hope that video helps illustrate the difference between classical Chinese medicine and maybe modern herbalism or even Western herbalism. Now before you go, the best way to stay in touch is to come grab my free guide at alexhine.com forward slash free on how to add 10 years to your life with classical or traditional Chinese medicine. So if you want to learn more about natural medicine, that is the place to come. The link is also in the description there below. And you can also check out my last two videos here and here.